Hello, everyone, and welcome to another News Coulomb video. There have been some exciting developments in some of the California charging infrastructure, and I wanted to, you know, go for a little drive and check it out and show you what you can expect in the near future, hopefully. I think you'll be a little bit excited about this because I know a lot of people have asked about the Interstate 5 corridor between the Bay Area and Los Angeles, and it looks like that network is finally getting put in place, and it looks like it will be implemented in a way that will actually facilitate travel along that route, you know, with reasonable coverage. So let's check it out. So, uh, you know, here we are in, uh, I guess, technically Santa Clarita. Now, we're right off the Interstate 5 freeway. We have one DC fast charger here now. This is one of their 50 kilowatt tritium chargers. Not really uh, powered up yet. We don't have a time frame for that. The reason I wanted to call it out before we continue our journey is because this charger is exactly 238 miles south of the Santanella charger that ChargePoint just installed. So 238 miles along the Interstate 5 route. Now that number sounds familiar because, well, it's the Bolt EV's EPA rated range. So does that mean that the Interstate 5 route is now open for the Bolt EV between the Bay Area and LA? Not quite. And the reason for that is you will never see 238 miles of range on a 70 mile an hour freeway. Now, here's the thing though. That means all it really takes is one charging implementation at this point before the north-south I-5 corridor between the Bay Area and Los Angeles is open for drivers in a Bolt EV. They also have a level two charger here. Now this is also a dual head uh, level two, which is nice. That's very helpful. And then of course, this is the other thing I wanted to focus on. Uh, if you'll notice, this is their West Coast uh, electric highway, as they call it, but they do call out the charger locations. And in this case, you know, we're here at Valencia. So this means that there might be three between here and this is, I'm guessing, Button Willow or Lost Hills. And this is either Kalinga or Kettleman City. And I believe this is still the Santa Nella Charger. So they're going to plan on putting at least three and maybe four more chargers in between this location and the uh, Santa Nella location. So it should be a very serviceable route once those go online, but we don't know exactly how long that is. So we're here at Santa Nella Village. It's gonna be really, really noisy because most people still drive internal combustion vehicles, uh, but this is actually interesting for me. So originally when this was uh, proposed by the California Energy Commission, it was proposed as a single charger site, but they've since, uh, I guess, decided to add two more chargers. So it's now a three charger DC fast charger site. And um, it couldn't be placed really, in my opinion, at a better location in terms of traveling the I-5 corridor. Uh, this is basically where you want it. It's far enough away from the Bay Area that it's not going to be inundated with local travel, but it's close enough that it actually enables those longer trips. Uh, and like I said, the fact that it's actually three chargers, I think, is really, really important. And the fact that it has level two as well as an emergency option. Though, here's the thing. I think that the level two charger there should only ever be used if you're staying at the motel across the street. Personally, I can't think of another reason why you'd want to stop and charge for hours here 
there is no real reason to do it. There's not a whole lot to do here. And the reason to be here is because you're on the road traveling. So just to sort of take a look at this site, we have the power over here. I'm guessing there are cabinets in there. Uh, you know, it's a 76 gas station. Like I said, we have a couple of level twos over here. Uh, California has their disabled uh, handicap, disabled uh, accessible parking. So they have a, a have to require that. You know that you'll notice this is that first stall over here also fits that. But I do like the layout here where this DC fast charger can accommodate the non-disabled and the disabled parking spots. So. The thing that's odd about this is, okay, it's ADA requirement, but this ADA uh, access strip, it doesn't really help you if you're trying to use the business over there. So that's a little bit strange. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I like the layout. I like the fact that you have two level two chargers here. They have their uh, fun little interface that they do, the Circle K 76 DC corridor. Um, little cowboy animation that they put on there but here the fact that you can accommodate three vehicles uh, I think is really really important and uh, it it I don't know why three instead of four power requirements or whatever but I'll say this it's much better than one that a single charger in Valencia in my opinion is borderline uh, unusable and I wouldn't rely on it unless you were staying at the hotel and like I said you probably should be using the level 2 and then DC fast charge just as an emergency uh, maybe in the middle of the night or something if you're traveling and nobody else is going to be on the road it would be a good emergency spot but here no I, I'm really liking this three chargers this is this is where I would want to see it what I want to see uh, what I'd want to see done so overall i'm you know pretty happy uh with this uh charger implementation in San santanella village i think it's going to help a lot of people out uh i expect to see it you know fairly busy but overall like you know i'm charging at 125 amps and and so i want to kind of go over what i like about this site and what i don't like this was originally scheduled to be only a single 50 kilowatt charger so the fact that they've added two additional 50 kilowatt chargers on top of it uh, that's really good uh, I'm glad that ChargePoint was able to do that one of the really big positives other than you know just the location because it is on i5 where we, we right now have a dearth of chargers it's at a gas station type location across the street is a motel 6 like literally just right there a side street so if you're gonna stay the night at the motel 6 you have a level two charger over there that you can use and it's a lot better in my opinion than trying to use the DC fast chargers. You know, they have a convenience store, uh, a bathroom. They used to have a restaurant here. I believe it was like a Jack in the box or something that's been closed, but who knows you get enough uh, traffic through here. Uh, I could see another restaurant taking up that lease space. It is for lease now. And these types of chargers are going to draw in people who would actually sit down and have a meal. So who knows, we might see another business come in maybe as a result of these chargers. Three chargers, it's an odd number literally, but I think it's way better than one or two chargers. So maybe if it were four, it would be ideal. And the good thing is they could add a fourth charger and not really increase the footprint. You know, so here's where I'll get into some of the negatives. One thing I don't like right off the bat is that these are 50 kilowatt chargers. Now I realize that the CEC grant fund is sort of dated, but here's the problem is 50 kilowatt chargers are not the greatest for travel. So even if I were traveling, say, up Interstate 5 instead of Highway 99, well, it saves me technically 10 minutes, according to the maps. Well, just one stop at a charger that's faster than 150 amps, just that one stop alone negates the 10 minute advantage. And so if all of the chargers the charge point is putting in along this route are only going to be 50 kilowatts, they aren't really going to be effective 
for the future vehicles that are coming along. So basically these will be backup chargers. The way I currently treat 24 kilowatt chargers on my long distance travel, that's the way I think future electric vehicles will be treating these chargers. And given the type of a stop that this is, I think that a minimum 100 to 150 kilowatt chargers are appropriate. And realistically, it should be closer to the 150 to 350 kilowatt chargers we see being put in at certain travel stops by Electrify America, even EVgo out in Baker. And then the other thing that I'm really not happy about with this charger site is the cost. It's 25 cents per kilowatt hour, which if that were it, fine, that would be great. You know, California, maybe the energy is expensive, whatever you want to say, but 25 cents a kilowatt hour, perfect. But they add on to it right now a 10 cent per minute fee. So because these are 50 kilowatt chargers, you're never going to get more than one kilowatt hour of energy a minute. And on top of that, you're paying an additional 10 cents. So at best, you're, you're paying basically 37 to 38 cents per kilowatt hour. And then when you step down in charge rate, you're paying even more. And by the time the Bolt EV steps down to where it's charging at 25 kilowatts, essentially you're paying 25 cents per kilowatt hour plus another 20 cents. So that's almost 45 cents per kilowatt hour that you end up paying. So this is pricey, not a huge fan of that. But uh, it is an essential charging location for those of you who are taking the I-5 corridor. And really all that's left at this point for a Bolt EV owner is to have a, a charger somewhere between Kettleman City and Wheeler Ridge. Smaller batteries, shorter range electric vehicles, you're still probably going to need at least one more charger in addition to that. Uh, whether there's one in Kettleman City and one at Grapevine or one at Lost Hills in Kettleman City, whatever, you're going to need something like that. Just Kettleman City alone is about 100 miles south of here. I'd love to hear what you think about this charging site. Have you had a chance to use it yet? Uh, what do you think about the pricing? What do you think about the location? Uh, where else do you think uh, ChargePoint is installing their West Coast electric highway chargers? Are they going to add three chargers per site on those areas along Interstate 5 as well? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. It helps me do these little scouting missions and these little videos talking about the infrastructure and uh, thank you for watching. By the way, I will draw your attention to the Bolt EV charging in the background. So apparently this is where they're charging right now at this hotel. Good call Bolt EV owner, good call.